to the 2022 season, 106 wins. How many of y'all really thought the Astros would have had that many wins? Well, Frommer Valdez, he looked a lot better in this game. And you had uh, Kyle Tucker leaving in the second inning. If this was in the middle of the season, everybody would be panicking. But this was an instance where we knew that he was just going to get the recognition from the fans. And uh, this was a definitely a game where Dusty Baker was doing some cute stuff, including having... Phil Maton face his brother, Nick Maton. So we'll talk about this, and Brett will be here soon, and we'll talk about playoff matchups on this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked on Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked on Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked on Astros, your team every day. My partner, uh, Brett, he's running a little bit late, but he'll be joining us uh, shortly. You can find him at H-Town Wheelhouse, and he is always uh, Stros, always positive, something like that. So uh, thank you for making the Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. If it's on YouTube, um, make sure you go and subscribe to us. We're going to do some awesome, uh, we may do some watch parties. We'll be doing something at Hooters um, for Game 3 which is going to be the first away game for the Astros. And then we're also going to be doing some after um, once we figure out who we're going to be playing with, we're going to be uh, getting together with the hosts of the other teams to do some smack talking after each postseason game. So definitely there's going to be some interesting ideas that we're going to be doing mostly only on YouTube. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube and make us your first listen on Apple, I see Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, check us out. So, guys, 106 wins. Doesn't that seem so nice? I know they uh, fell short of their 2019 107 wins, but who cares? Uh, they, they finished the season healthy. They finished the season on a good note. And Frommer Valdez, he looked a little rough in his last couple appearances, but he looked great tonight. He looked like he had, he had 10 strikeouts and five innings, and he probably could have gone deeper in the game, but this was just a tune-up for his uh, next start, which will be an ALDS. So, yes, this is um, this was a great series overall for the Astros. Yes, they did lose the first game of the series, but that's fine. I think the Phillies had really game plan for what they wanted to do in that series uh, game. They wanted to clinch the playoffs for the first time since 2011. So they came out with a game plan to win. And then they're like, okay, whatever happens, happens. And then the Astros pitching, they took over and the offense scored just enough runs to get the job done. And that's what happened today's game. Uh, like I mentioned in the opening, uh, they took out Kyle Tucker early. And it was probably a good thing because Chaz McCormick came in and was three for three in this game with the RBI one run score. You have the led Ms. Diaz. Uh, he played um, a lot. Uh, he got a hit as well. Alvarez got two hits himself. Bregman got a hit. Yuli Gurriel got a hit as well. In fact, I believe that he was supposed to originally be a first baseman, but then um, before the game, they switched him and put Mancini at first base. That way Yuli can get some time off his feet from playing first base. So uh, Chad, uh, Jake Myers is uh, looking pretty good. He got another hit today. So he's looking pretty good in his second stint back with the Astros, and we'll talk a little bit about him in a little bit. But uh, one outside of Frommer Valdez, just looking at what Christian Vasquez did today, he finally got that big home run that Astros fans have been waiting for since he joined the Astros. And it was a, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was above the Crawford boxes. So it wasn't a Crawford box special, but it was sweet. He pulled his hands in and then he just kind of swung towards uh, the Crawford boxes and hit one. I think he hit one of the signs, but, or just right below the signs, but that if he's getting hot right before the playoffs, and if he's going to do that in playoffs, then yeah, it's definitely going to put some pressure on Dusty Baker to play him a little bit more than Martin Maldonado. But then definitely, uh, we'll see what happens. I think it has to do a lot with matchups and who he feels comfortable with. And 
I think at this point in the season, Vasquez has caught mostly every pitcher. So you can't say, well, um, I don't feel comfortable throwing um, Vasquez out there because he hasn't caught pitcher A, pitcher B. I think that this is um, this is definitely a situation. So uh, 106 wins, guys. This is a great team. Yes, it does have some holes in the offense. Center field, you have three guys going for one position. You have Dubon, you have um, Chaz McCormick, but he's probably going to be playing a lot of left field. Unless you're going to be putting, um, if, unless you're going to be putting Alvarez out there, and uh, then you also have Jake Myers, who's going to be getting some playing time. Then you have uh, David Hensley, who got a triple today. He could be uh, forcing his way on to the playoff roster as well, and that's something that James Click talked about. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, nobody has really taken over the center field position. You would like Jake Myers to do that because he plays great defense. Um, so, so far in his second stint, he's looked a little bit better than he did the first stint, but overall, um, I know Dubon, you, uh, Dusty Baker likes his arm. He is, um, Justin Verlander's personal center fielder, even though in this last game, I believe it was somebody else. It was Jake Myers or Chaz McCormick. I can't remember who it was, but, um, Dubon is another option, but then, uh, who knows? Nobody's really taken that by the horns and just been like, you know what? I'm the center fielder, but Jake, uh, Chaz McCormick, it looks like he's, he's looking for everyday role in the playoffs and he's been doing pretty good recently. So, um, uh, yeah, Dubon did play pretty well at shortstop. And I think that, um, but I, during the playoffs, I don't think you're going to see him d- uh, playing shortstop in the playoffs, unless it's, uh, there's a big injury to Jeremy Pena and Jeremy Pena, um, hopefully he did not play in today's game, but that's something that, uh, I, we all expected, uh, the x-rays were, um, negative and after a uh, fouling ball, off, um, off his knee. So it was day to day. So I, I, I don't think anybody expected him to play in the final game of the season, but what a season by the rookie. I mean, uh, nobody expected him to be Carlos Correa, but he did the best Jeremy Pena impression that he could. And yeah, he went through that little prolonged slump, but uh, like we talked about yesterday, he kind of fixed it a little bit. So the offense, yes, it does have some weak points, but if we have some of the key guys like Jose Altuve had his best season since what, 2017. And then you have um, Bregman starting to come around. Then you have Kyle Tucker hit 30 home runs for his second year in a row. And then you have Alvarez he was on a roll there, but uh, he kind of went through a little um, cold stretch. But now he's he's struggling a little bit. He struggled a little bit, but now he's back to uh, hitting like Alvarez did. And then you have um, uh, you have some uh, you have uh, Yuli Gurriel. He he's hit and miss. But the guy the Astros traded for Mancini, he's been kind of um, a little bit of a disappointment and. I still think he's going to make the the Astros uh, playoff roster, and hopefully, maybe now that the regular season is over, maybe his he can have a mind chef there. But overall, I just think that looking at the playoff roster, I think the Astros are pretty much set. We'll talk about this when uh, Brett gets here, but I'm excited about this. I'm just I'm just looking at it like okay. Well, who are the Astros going to face? And it's kind of like making me think about, well, if you had to bet on who you're going to face, who would you bet on? I mean, there's a lot of people that are like, well, I'd rather face the Mariners. I'd rather face the Blue Jays. But who would you bet on? So betonline.net is your number one source for all football and betting info info this season. Find all the latest player development, team matchups, news, and podcasts in in in-depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to BetOnline.net or use your MLB device to learn more. Who's going to win MVP this year? Is it going to be Shohei Itani or Mr. 62 himself, Aaron Judge? Uh, I don't know if anybody knows at this point who's going to win the World Series. Um, right now, the Dodgers are favored over the Astros, according to Bet Online. 
but that could change because the Astros, um, uh, I think have, um, I think the teams compare pretty well, but I would go with some of the Astros pitching, but, uh, the Dodgers hitting may have a little bit of edge over that. So go to bed online and get all your sports betting need bed online. It's where the game starts. And Brett, do you want to talk to us a little bit about simple seats? Yeah, sure. Simple Seats is the way that you need to go about getting your playoff tickets. That's right. ALDS Game 1 is on sale at simpleseats.com. The great thing is you skip and avoid the 20% upcharge that other ticket brokers are going to throw at you. You also have zone seating prices, and it's not just Astros. It's Texans, Texas A&M, U of H, UT, so much more, and even comedy shows. I mean, you've got entertainment in Houston. They've got the tickets. It's really cool. I've been using them since 2021, and I think that it is the best choice to get tickets on the market. That is not through the Astros. They've sold out, so you go check it out. ALDS Game 1 tickets at simpleseats.com. Use the promo code LOCKEDON10 to get $10 off your first order of 50 bucks or more. Simple seats, no prices, no 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 extra charges, low prices, everything you want at simpleseats.com. Wow, I almost threw it to they're giving away free tickets. That's not what I meant, folks. So, (laughs) hey, you know what? There's nothing like, you know, I told Eric I was going to be late tonight. And what does he do? He kicks me into a live read. That's what I get. That's my punishment. That's okay. (laughs) Um, I was watching my son drain threes at practice. That was really cool. And got to watch a scrimmage of uh, Springs and Friendswood tonight. That was fun as well. Dude, 106 wins, man. What what a way to end the season. And I don't know if you talked about this, but I'm just going to say this, and then I'll let you continue where you were. Ryan Stanek, uh, you know, friend of the show, um, basically was the became the all time um, lowest ERA for a season, and in, in, you know, for a relief pitcher. He's been a guest on our show. Hopefully, we can have him back soon. But Thursday night, folks, tomorrow night. We got MT Sports, Matt Thomas from Sports Talk 790, going to join the show at 8.30. So, Eric, take it away. Back to your I, – I don't know where you were. I just kind of came in came in hot there. Go ahead. All right. And speaking of simple seats, people always ask me all the time, hey, Eric, do you have any – they wink at me. Do you have any hookups on Astros tickets? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, but uh, you can use simple seats and use Locked on 10 or Eric the Man or one of those just to save $10 off your first 50 But – um, yeah, we don't get extra discounts on anything like that. But speaking of Ryan Stanek, he finished um, the regular season with a 115 ERA. It's the lowest by a reliever in Astros franchise history. The record of 150 was previously set by Will Harris in 2015. Sorry, 2019. Also, um, breaking news today is that from Rivaldez topped Garrett Cole in terms of inning pitch this season. So he is now the AL innings pitch um, leader. So that was impressive of itself there. So the Astros have a lot of great pitching, great um, overall, like um, Framer Valdez finished the season with 201.1 innings pitched, 194 strikeouts, 17 wins, six losses, a 2.82 ERA. In a normal season, he would probably be one of the top candidates for Cy Young. But when you have Justin Verlander, who um, almost had one of the lowest ERA from a starter in, in, in MLB history, it's hard to really get into conversation. Then you have Dylan Cease, um, Alex Manoa. you got a whole bunch of guys out there, uh, Shane McClanahan. It's kind of hard to creep in that little uh, group there. But from Valdez and his um, quality start streak, they really got there. And apparently um, all the Astros players who are wearing – uh, the Framer Valdez quality start um, tour um, uh, in the locker room today. So that was pretty impressive that the whole team was kind of backing their guy. And uh, you know what? Remember Valdez had two kind of bad starts in a row. He pitched well today. And so maybe that was the clubhouse's way of saying, hey, Frommer, you got this. Let's get our head back in game and let's focus on getting back in a W uh, column. Yeah, that's right. Um, for Rodez, the lights out, um, kind of a lights out performance and literally lights out in the stadium <laughs> at the same time. So it was one of those weird things that um, I just, you know, sorry, I'm a little frazzled. Um, 
hold on one second. I, I got to take a break. I'll okay, that's fine. All right. So, uh, Brian Abreu, uh, once again, he did really good there. He pitched um, again today. He has 1.94 ERA. Stanek, of course, pitched good today. Then uh, Montero had to come in and clean up um, Dusty Baker trying to be cute. And I appreciate this. And I know if uh, Phil Miton didn't hit the guy in front of him, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But you had brother against brother. You had Phil versus Nick. And it was actually a cool story. You had both dugouts on the railing, like, okay, what's going to happen? And it was actually a cool moment. And um, then Phil uh, threw a, a slider on the first pitch and uh, everybody's like, uh, the Astros dugout's like, oh, oh, he threw a slider and everything because you expected a fastball in that situation. And then uh, then from there, it just became a epic battle between two brothers that have never faced each other. They're four years apart, so they've never faced each other in high school, in college, anything like that. So definitely it was a cool situation. I know that Nick ended up getting a hit in that situation. And for the, one of the first times this year, we saw a little grin from Phil. He, I, I mean, Nick after a game said, yeah, I didn't really make eye contact with him because I, if I made eye contact with him, then I would definitely have broken out laughing or something like that and lost my composure or anything. But uh, definitely uh, it was a cool moment for the two brothers. And I know their parents were probably enjoying this. But after the game, um, Phil said that um, that it was a cool moment. It was definitely something different. It still was funny seeing him in the box. It was good at bat. Put some good swings on the ball. He's one for one off of me. Hope it happens again in the future so I can level the playing field. Because you know he doesn't like the fact that his brother got hit off of him. Now this is going to be a topic on Thanksgiving for like this year and Christmas and any other family get together. Hey, Phil, do you remember that time I got a hit off of you in a Major League Baseball game? Well, I do. And that was pretty awesome. So, uh, But the Phillies were smart enough to say, hey, we want the ball. And Phil's like, really, really, guys, you're going to do this to me. And so now, you know, Nick's going to have that um, kind of displayed there. But um, overall, this was a kind of um, a cool situation. And uh, before uh, I forget about it, I do want to talk about Dusty Baker real quick. He was mm-hmm. uh, he was um, he was asked about um, Barry Bonds. And he said, well, do you think that Barry Bonds record of 73 home runs was tainted? Uh, because it should have an asterisk next to it. And uh, I guess everybody wants to know because, of course, Aaron Judge has his 62 home runs now. And um, Dusty Baker said, well, I saw I was with him at the time and I saw all 73 home runs go over, over the fence. I didn't see an asterisk next to him. So um, to me, they were legit. So that's just his opinion. And I've seen a lot of writers going back and forth, like saying, well, should um, Aaron Judge be the new home run king because he did it clean versus all the guys who were roided up and did it like that? So it, that's something yeah. that we can talk about more in the off season. But that was that was kind of a uh, interesting quote by Dusty Baker there. Yeah, I mean, someone like Dusty Baker is not going to throw Barry Bonds under the bus. I think he knows what the public opinion is out on Barry Bonds. And I've always said it, said it, Ever since all this stuff came out, um, number one, Barry Bonds was an all-star, one of the greatest hitters to ever play the game, one of the greatest outfielders to ever played the game before the steroid era. Number two, in the steroid era, the pitchers and the hitters were both using steroids. So it was pretty much an even playing field. They were both getting injured at a record clip because of the steroid use, because of the lack of rest their bodies were getting. And they were doing things that they would normally do without the enhancement of a performance drug, like a performance enhancing drug, HGH, steroids, whatever they were taking. So at the end of the day, one of the biggest mistakes that Barry Bonds made was honestly not taking steroids. It was the way that he treated the media throughout his entire career. And that's why a lot of the media didn't like him. He snubbed a lot of people. He had his own place in the locker room. He would go on the road, have his own floor. He would have his own spot in the plane. So he pretty much 
carted himself off and became someone who was not friendly, not only to his teammates, but to the media. So when this came out, the media was like, you know what? You haven't been friendly to us, so we're not going to give you any slack. Um, Andy Pettit, you never really hear uh, associated with steroids, even though he admitted to it, said he took it as recovery and admitted it. And I think there, I think it goes a long way when a player admits what they did and they and going forward. Like Fernando Tatis, I don't think he'll be affected by this negatively. If he comes back clean and performs the way he can perform, or we know he can perform, and we know he's not on PEDs, then I think his name is cleared. Now, he made a crappy excuse in the beginning, but he's going to serve a suspension and he's going to move on. Barry Bonds is the home run champion until Major League Baseball says he's not. You know, if we're going to put an asterisk by Barry Bonds and we need to put an asterisk by the last couple Yankees World Championships because so, they had 12 to 24 players or whatever that were, that were freaking using roids on those teams. And it's like, where does it stop? You know, um, what about how do we the know Dodgers who is cheating 2020 World Series? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no, I'm just saying like, like you can nitpick and everything. The, the bottom line is it's in the record books. The bottom line is it is one of those things where it's happened in the past and it's gone. Right. And he was hitting home runs before that. Aaron Judge is clean. Aaron Judge has never tested positive for steroids. Now, if he comes up a PED test positive next month, then forget it. Right. But right. who cares? Thoughts by Dusty. All right. This is probably going to be the shortest thoughts by Dusty ever. Asked about uh, what he said to the team after the win. This is what he said. Just win. <laughs> so that's his Just message. <laughs> so uh, what what do you have to say before you, you, the team fa goes to the playoffs? Just win. So uh, Dusty Baker on Framer Valdez, he said he pitched great all year. Dusty Baker on Ryan Stanek, he had an outstanding season. <laughs> And uh, Dusty Baker was also walking around the Astros clubhouse, hugging all his players after the 162nd game of the season. So Dusty Baker is definitely a player's manager there. So, uh, yes, um, I'm excited to see what happens in ALDS. Now, we need to switch our focus. Uh, before I do, Justin Verlander becomes the second oldest pitcher in MLB history to finish the season with an ERA below 180. Uh, and the other person was Sion himself. So that was something that's pretty interesting. Uh, that's so, uh, so, and uh, today was supposed to be Alex Bregman day. Um, every day on October 5th, he had a home run for the past, what, five years or something, or four years, he hit a home run. Uh, it was always during the playoffs, but of course this wasn't a playoff game, so he didn't hit a home run in this game, so um, maybe just because it wasn't a playoff game, it didn't mean anything. But he was one of the guys that wanted to stay in the game the whole time. But um, overall, I think that the Astros just really played great baseball. Kyle Tucker, um, he did great. 30 home runs, 25 stolen bases, 107 RBIs. He played in career high 150 games. Can't say enough for him. Uh, I, I know I mentioned it earlier. Dusty Baker had a classy move taking him out in the second inning. Uh, basically, just to get the fans to give him a little bit of um, applause and credit and everything. But that was That's just awesome. kind of weird um, taking him out quite that early. But um, I think that's just something Dusty Baker did. So um, Altuve probably had his best season since 2017. He had 28 home runs, 103 runs scored, and uh, he had a slash line of uh, 300, 387, 533 with an OPS of 920. Uh, he had 18 stolen bases, which is something that I think a lot of Astros fans didn't think we would see anymore after his knee issues. So um, he did good. And uh, so just remember that prior to the season, Altuve had 13 bases combined since 2018. So that wow. said, I didn't think that stolen bases was something that was a part of his, um, his repertoire anymore. But um, just, I think that Altuve is probably the MVP of this team. I know for a while there, Alvarez was the MVP, but he kind of slowed down a little bit, but just looking at the overall season, Altuve has got to be the MVP. Yeah. Altuve, I think is, I mean, I can't disagree with that because he has been consistent all year. He 
We know he's struggled at times. We know the past couple of years he's had kind of his ups and downs. But he is the same hitter he was prior to 2017. This rookie that came up and hit the scene on 2011 has more hits in Major League Baseball, Eric, since he came into the Major Leagues. And he has been the model of consistency, unlike any other. I mean, we haven't seen a hitter this consistent in a long, long time. And Jose Altuve still, Eric, I believe, has a good four or five years. I mean, I know that's kind of pushing a little bit, but if he stays healthy and you get someone like Nin, next year, dude, David Hensley is going to come on this team and he's going to make some statements and he's going to maybe become your utility guy. And he's a guy that could give someone like Jose Altuve a rest at second base because he's a very good bat. He's got a very good glove. But Jose Altuve, if we were voting today, would get my vote for MVP. Now, had Jordan not gone through a slump and stayed more consistent, I think Jordan would have possibly got it. But Jose Altuve absolutely deserves it. Outside of his base running, <laughs> he's the best baseball player on this team right now. Yeah. So um, Click kind of had some uh, comments before today's game about the playoff roster, and he w- he didn't really confirm that they're going to go with 12 pitchers. But what he said was he said, is that extra bench player more valuable to you than another pitcher? How likely are you used that extra bench player as a team of guys that played nine innings mostly every day? It's a luxury we have a very good problem to have. And that's probably more of how it affects our decision. So why have all those guys that can pinch hit when you might need that extra pitcher? That's kind of what I've been saying. Um, So, and also it depends on who you um, have on the roster, the matchups, like you have the Blue Jays versus the Mariners. The uh, Blue Jays don't have a lot of left-hand hitters in their lineups, but you have the Mariners that do. They have a lot of lefties and a lot of switch hitters. So, you know, Dusty Baker may be um, able to convince Click to bring on Will Smith if you're going to face the Mariners versus if you're going to face the Blue Jays. So Will um, Smith's given up 44 hits and 48 innings. The more I look at Will Smith and especially what he did in the last game he pitched, Eric, I I just – I know that I named him in an article that I wrote yesterday for 103.7 The Game um, about Will Smith being on there. But but look, I I just – I don't. I don't think it's that important. I'll. I'll be real honest. Dusty I'm is. not buying this. Well, that. That's great. Well, <laughs> you know, Dusty's a lot more long on the tooth than I am. He actually has major league experience, and he's been a manager for a while. So this is a complete like guy armchair quarterback. This is my opinion. I don't think a left-handed reliever matters as much as he makes it out to be because Eric, because this bullpen is so good because this starting rotation is so good. Now, if we if we do not have the kind of pitching we have, if we have the holes in the bullpen like the Dodgers have, then yeah, maybe it becomes more important. But I think there's way too much stock, way too much importance. If this guy's given up 44 hits in 48 games, you only have a seven-game or a five-game series to give up those hits in. And you may have one or two opportunities where you throw him in there and he poo-poos the bet. And that's all it could take to swing a series in someone else's favor. And so I, I just, I don't, I don't like, I don't like to think that if I, I if you're going to put him on there, like you better have some analytics to back it up because I would rather a Garcia or someone go out there in his place. I, I don't know. I just, I don't feel good about Will Smith. What do y'all think? I, um, <laughs> What do y'all think about about Smith? Someone said give give Smith the bus ticket. Wow, I'm not saying kick him off the team. Yeah, no, he, he's like going he to be over here. Yeah, Go he's going to be valuable um, to this postseason. Maybe not against the Blue Jays, but def- I, I think the Mariners. There's a there's a argument there. So the, uh, going on, uh, this is what Click had to say uh, about the the fact that they have two off days in between games one and two and then two and three. He said it reduces the number of potential back-to-back days you would have. Potentially, you can have a situation where a pitcher never pitches on back-to-back day days and still appears in four out of five games, talking about the, uh, the relievers. So technically, you can use most of the relievers in all the games, so you don't need to carry 13 
pitchers is what he's trying to say there. But they're trying to decide they never pinch hit for anybody. So why carry the extra bat? Now, the other thing they have to talk about is, well, they like to carry the third catcher. They don't really have a third catcher right now. You have Christian Vasquez and you have Martin Maldonado. Those guys are pretty much would be starting catchers on most any other team. Um, and this is what he had to say. I also think Yiner uh, could be a important uh, pinch hitter for us. It's something I talked to Mickey Story about, about what he's seen in AAA. He thinks the simplicity of his approach and his ability to put the bat on the ball makes him very attractive uh, pinch hit option. It could be a situation where somebody, uh, where someone like that serves a hybrid role. But the problem is, is that when he was up here, Dusty Baker didn't play him that much. So he didn't get a lot of ex- experience. I don't even know why Diaz is even a consideration. Like over Hensley, Hensley actually hit the dang ball. Hensley actually can play more positions than Diaz. Hensley's is, Hensley is a dude. This guy's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, He's an absolute specimen of an athlete. He can hit the ball. He can catch the ball. He can throw the ball. He can do it right. all. David Hensley, I think, deserves I, – I just I just don't see why we need a third catcher. I, I get it, but I guess if – I guess they go with three catchers. Diaz is your guy. It's, it's obviously not going to be Corey Lee this year. Corey Lee's time will come in 2023. But – um, we've got some interesting decisions for the Astros to make. You know, they're going to be doing workouts this weekend. I know that they announced to the press that I think starting Saturday, they're going to start opening stuff up. So we're going to start hearing the players talk about maybe some plans or going forward or whatever. And by Saturday, we'll have the second game already starting of the ALDS because literally back to back to back here, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get on a plane, come to Houston Tuesday. Welcome visitors. We hope you like not winning the LDS because I just I think the Astros are set up really nicely. I do want to address something real quick, and I've heard this not just on here, but on the radio today. I think on um, I, I forgot what show it was on, but a lot of people said that Christian Javier should be your game three starter. If he's your uh, been your top starter all year, why start him as your four guy? over Lance and colors. And um, what would be your answer to that? Cause I have my opinion. I, you know, I think there is an argument to be made now because Dusty Baker's old school and because Dusty Baker is, has a pecking order and veterans typically get McCullers may trump that card because of his, his experience. Right. But if right. you ask me who, who deserves a third spot, I think it's Christian Javier. And it's not a knock on Lance McCullers. It's not because I don't think McCullers can do it, but it's because of what Javier brings. And the, I mean, his swings and misses and his Ks per nine inning, Eric, and just what he's been able to do all year and most recently in September. Him and McCullers are both really hot. Now, remember, I had McCullers and Valdez flipped because McCullers has better home numbers. Then he does road numbers. Valdez is actually better on the road, you right. know? So I think there's three or four different ways you could set this up. I just think that it's too obvious the way that they're going to order things because of seniority, because of right, left, right, all that stuff. But I think to wrap it up, I think Javier could be a nice third, like third in the order rotation pitcher and McCullers fourth. I wouldn't be mad about that. All right. I, I think my theory is play, go ahead and pitch McCullers game three and, or whichever order Javier, I mean, uh, Valdez game two and then yeah. McCullers game three, whichever order you want. And if you need a game four, Christian Javier could come in and just get it done. And I think that he can just save Justin Verlander for game one of ALCS. That's just my opinion. If needed, I just think that he has the stuff to shut him down. And uh, by the way, I did see a note yesterday that we did not talk about that. Um, Justin Verlander is the first player in, um, I believe in, I want to say MLB history. I don't have the tweet in front of me, but to have uh, three starts of no hit baseball, like he did with five, five innings or more. Wow. So I mean, what he he's done since coming back from the injury 
is just awesome. It's just, it's, it's just so impressive. And that's how he's going to end up uh, winning the Cy Young. And so, um, I do want to bring this up. You sent this to me. Uh, it's from Greg Harvey between the numbers. And he said teams in MLB history with three plus pitchers to have 108, um, 180 case plus and a less than a 290 ERA in the same season. The 2022 Astros, Christian Javier, Justin Verlander, and from Revol- Valdez. The 2021 Brewers, Corbin Burns, Freddie Prata, and Brandon uh, Woodruff. And yeah. then the 2011 Phillies, ironically the last team to make the the playoffs, Roy Holiday, Cliff Lee, and Cole Hamels. So the Astros are definitely an elite co- company there because this doesn't happen that often. So – I know a lot of us like to complain about why bring Will Smith in on during a no hitter in the ninth inning. Why do all this? But just from, why can't the Astros score runs on certain games? This team has a lot of strengths. This team has great pitching. This strength has a great bullpen. This team has great bullpen. This team, when the hitting is on, it can score like that. So you just got to deal with the days where they're going to get shut out or only score one or two runs. But when they're on, this team could be one of the best in baseball. So go and close this out. Yeah, I'll close this out. And I'll, I'll just kind of close out answering a question and then wrap it up. Um, Mr. Wynn says, Brett and Eric, why would you want Framber? Um, why do you want Framber second starter over Javier? Well, number one, Framber's been the second starter all year. And so they're not going to change. You're not going to leapfrog a guy that's possibly a four starter to a two starter in the playoffs. It's just not going to happen, especially with what Framber's done all year right. long. I just think this watching the wild card games are going to be fun. I mean, you got a team like the Mets, a hundred game winning team in the freaking wild card. Are you kidding me? The team that, 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 qualified above them that won their division um had eight less wins or or the team that's anyways the team that's a higher seed has eight less wins it's crazy okay these playoffs are going to be so fun i can't wait i want the alds between the mariners and the jays to go all three games i want them to score like 10 15 runs both of them i want them to i want them to act like it's home run derby so when they come to houston they're completely exhausted <laughs> and they can't even hit a baseball because they're so tired of playing baseball. Let's have a game three ALD um, AL wild card go 25 innings. Let's just do it. 25 innings. Let's just make sure they're dead tired when they get here. And so the Astros can just stomp them in the ground and move on to the ALCS and play the Cleveland guardians. All right. Something that we can all ponder over overnight, but I saw a report that the Mets are considering in the wild card series, not pitching Jacob deGrom and saving him for game one of the NLC uh, DS. That would be very interesting to save your best pitching uh, there. So pitcher there. So uh, that's kind of risky. And so we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, th- guys, that's all we got for this edition. The Astros have 106 wins. Uh, the Locked on Astros podcast will be here throughout the playoffs. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett H. John Wheelhouse. We are the Locked on Astros podcast, and we'll be back tomorrow with Matt Thomas of Sports Talk 790 and Ghost Trust.